Okay, the noise you're hearing is the uh, just a uh, just got a small gas burner which is igniting the big logs in the firebox. What we're going to do is we're going to fire the, the big logs will burn overnight and we'll start the actual stoking tomorrow. So it's been a long day, still full of nice pots. This is, this is where it starts. So we'll light up now, take a break. We'll be up at about 2 o'clock to put the wood in for its light feed and then start serious stoking tomorrow. Hopefully the kiln will be about 4 or 500 degrees centigrade and ready to go. And so will we. Okay, it's 10 o'clock now. Now we're just putting the kiln to bed. It's at a good 206 on the one firebox, and we've lit the other firebox. And once this is properly ignited, then off we are to sleep. And we'll get up tomorrow morning early and start the stoking. Just two now, huh? Hey? Okay, so we've had we've had six hours of nice consistent stoking and the kiln is now at one thousand degrees centigrade. And this is an interesting stage for a reduction fired pottery. Uh, what we're doing now is we're going to put the kiln into what's known as reduction. So um, it's smoky, there's, there's a smell of carbon monoxide around and um, the, the purpose for this is now the kiln is starved of, of oxygen and it's now going to seek oxygen inside the material. So we actually are entering the molecular structure of the materials that we've put in there and the kiln goes inside and leaches out the extra oxygen molecules. So this is a, these are the signs. It's a nice bit of back pressure, smoke and a very dark smoky flames. Um, and we, we just see that we get a nice pressure down to the bottom of the kiln so, so that every piece gets the same treatment. This, this is where it, it there's a transition from gentle fire to fierce fire. The kiln is, the fire is now trapped inside and it starts a bit of a roar from the fire boxes and it can even, you can even feel a tremor in the ground sometimes. So we carry on like this for only 15 minutes and then we lighten up, clean up all the carbon inside and then we proceed with the rest of our firing. So that's what it looks like reduction and this is the difference between what we do as potters and what other people do so we get different effects different colors different textures in our glazes um, we can go from with a simple material like copper oxide we can go from grass green to bright red and this is how we manipulate it so this firing now becomes an artistic process rather than a scientific one because we have a whole lot of variations. You can give it more or less. You can also miss it completely <laughs> and get no reds at all. So, but, so this is a critical phase for the firing. So we're just sitting here waiting for the right moment to change the kiln from, from its heavy reduction, heavy smoky reduction, into its light glaze reduction. And it's a, a really a magical time for 
before a kiln and in the life of this firing. We've got to get it just just right. Um, there we go. I'm going to pull the damper out. You'll notice, you'll see the difference immediately. The chimney starts sucking harder. It's very subtle. It's about 30 millimeters of this piece of shelf pulling it out. Now it reminds me of of an ancient legend which was uh, uh, there was a Chinese potter and he made a series of pots for his emperor and the they came out of the kiln a beautiful jade green this this color now jade was regarded as a magical stone and it had the property to uh, of longevity and to allow people to live into the spiritual world so the pots all came out green the emperor was so taken by this copy of jade this is a copy of jade that he ordered from the potter a vast number of pots to fill his palace now the the problem was the potter had achieved this green by mistake he didn't know how he had done it and then much later when he failed and failed again on pain of death he was forced to produce these green pots the man was so desperate that he threw himself into into the fire and that was exactly what the kiln needed to put it into a strong reduction and turn all the pots all the pots of lovely jade green um, that's the legend but the reality today is about self-sacrificing and placing oneself inside this chamber with with the pots so to be able to fire kilns like this, you actually have to use, go inside this, this chamber with your imagination, uh, with your heart, and with your spirit. What we're doing in terms of um, you know, artistic production on the pots, we, we try to simulate a, a very ancient way of firing and very ancient beauty. Now, um, the original kilns were the dragon kilns of China. They were called the dragon kilns because there was many chamber upon chamber uh, firing up a hill and the entire village was involved in the firing. Now, this is impossible for, for a, an artist potter. It, it's, it's just not feasible to have that kind of infrastructure. So, what we've chosen is a small kiln. This kiln is 40 cubic foot. It was originally designed by uh, Mr. Fred Olson, who, who was a potter from America. Um, but the kiln was rather a difficult one to manage. And it took a, an Englishman over a cup of tea to, to sort it out. So Joe Finch has added um, an internal flue in the chimney and an external chimney, uh, which makes it a proper downdraft kiln and, and very easy to manage. Um, one person stoking this kiln with the proper management can get it up to temperature in, in eight or nine hours. Uh, with a with a good preheat, the kiln. These are my parametric cones which you saw yesterday, and my kiln fires absolutely evenly, top to bottom, and it's more than a meter from the top down to the bottom. So you can see it's a really a, a wonderful, wonderfully even kiln. Okay, so uh, temperature is climbing now. I can actually see the pots glowing, and we are using. Uh, probably two tons of invasive alien timbers to fire this kiln. The design and the, the, the ease of firing makes this kiln a perfect example for rural African kilns. Um, people would be able to cut their wood and make very beautiful things out of, 
out of uh, very little material. So the, the idea is to promote this kiln um, uh, in a paper at Fortier University, which we'll be writing up over the next three years, and promoting this kiln as a, as a wealth bringer to the rural areas of South Africa. Half past six and the potters are all exhausted. The cones are just beginning to melt, so this is the final stages of the kiln. It's all white hot, so it's gone past the melting point of steel in there. And so we're just soaking the cones down, making sure the glazes are all fine, and then we clam up to go to a well-deserved shower and maybe a drink. down and 10 is coming and 11 they're all going to go down together okay, I just need this cone 10 down you know it's uh, still up I want it down and then we there. We done. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks.